Britain faces the Brexit equivalent of an All Blacks rugby haka. Nervous stories were told on Tuesday, tongue wagging, bulging eyeballs, and chest dumping from their European Union opponents, but nothing that a stiff upper lip won't see off. Never fear, was the rallying cry of the three Brexiteers who took turns on the conference stage in Manchester to reassure delegates that everything was still to Kedabu, despite what they might read in the business press. It is time to stop treating the referendum result as if it was a plague of boils, said Boris Johnson, with a side swipe toward pessimists at The Economist and Financial Times. Without pain and doubt and anxiety, there can be no pleasure, no triumph and no success. The ripest by the International Trade Secretary, Liam Fox, to the doubters, was to list all the economic activity still happening despite Brexit, a counterattack only somewhat undermined by the latest financial headlines flashing news of a collapsing construction figures. After weeks of Tory infighting, this was an unexpectedly coordinated response to recent setbacks in Brussels. Each of the three leading Leave campaigners in the cabinet paid lip service to the authority of the Prime Minister, yet had their own way of calling for the country to gird its loins. There is a determined exercise in Whitehall devoted to every contingency, revealed the Brexit secretary, David Davis. Prizes for success are enormous, as are the costs of failure. We are a country of Shakespeare, Austin, and James Dyson, he boasted, as if sonnets and vacuum cleaners were a backup plan. It's Waterloo, it's Agincourt, it's Creasy, we win all these things, added Jacob Riesman, der Tagnan of the Tory fringe. A neutral spectator might wonder if it were the Brits performing a haka, but there was posturing on both sides on Tuesday. The future of the union is much more important than Brexit, warned the EU's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, earlier, in an equally fiery debate at the European Parliament. The integrity of the internal market and the four freedoms, they are not negotiable. Despite the bluster in Manchester there has been little to suggest that the British government ultimately disagrees or will heed Johnson's call to let that lion roar. Theresa May's recent proposal for a two-year transition period after Brexit is predicated on the acknowledgement that continued full access to the single market can only come right now with the acceptance of all the existing rules and regulations. In her Home Secretary's conference speech there was no mention this year of using Brexit to slam the doors on unwanted immigration. Even the Agriculture Secretary, Michael Gove, expects extensive use of migrant labor schemes to stop the British fruit rotting on the tree next harvest. Instead, as the Chancellor, Philip Hammond, put it, this week has mainly been about rhetorical flourishes. Gov entertained the faithful by telling them that escaping EU rules on animal tagging would allow farmers to sell pig's ears to China. Who am I to tell you that you shouldn't have chlorinated chicken if you want it said Riesmig. Their speeches have been carefully calibrated maintaining party discipline on the matters of substance rallying the cavaliers with better gags than cabinet roundheads such as Hammond. But the fear among those business leaders anxiously lobbying in the wings of conference this week is that the bragging and posturing will make May's the inevitable climb downs that much harder and the risk of talks collapsing that much higher. Fox told the conference that his trade department was now providing political risk insurance for British exporters looking to explore dangerous new markets abroad. More than a few will be wondering if this is on offer to domestic companies too.